Welcome to the channel. Thank you for checking out this video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the picture profiles built into the 6 series and 7 series of the Sony camera lineup. Now I'm going to try to keep this video as simple as possible because there's so many different aspects to the picture profiles that it can get very complicated. I'll be giving you an overview of each of the picture profiles, showing you exactly what they do in camera, how they affect your video and giving you some tips and tricks on how to get the best out of them. So let's jump straight into it by showing you how to access your picture profiles. With your camera in video mode, press menu, head on down to your pink category, which is exposure and color, move down to color and tone, which is number six, and then picture profiles. Press the center button and this will load up all your picture profiles. By pressing up and down on your dial, we'll cycle through all your options. Another way to access your picture profiles is by pressing your FN button on the rear of the camera. This will load up your quick switch menu. Now depending on what model Sony you have, you may find that your picture profiles are in this quick switch menu. And if not, you can probably customize it so that they are. And one final way to access it, if your Sony has a rear touch screen, in most cases, the picture profiles will be loaded somewhere on your rear screen. So now I've shown you how to access your picture profiles, you're probably wondering, what do they actually do? Well, in short, picture profiles change the colors, the parameters and characteristics of our video. These include level of detail, contrast, highlight, shadows, black levels, etc. Each of our picture profiles gives our videos a distinctive look. In our picture profiles, there's two distinct categories. The first is what I like to call final picture profiles. And this is where the colors, parameters and characteristics are baked into the video file and don't need any post-processing. Think of it as the look of your video is completed in camera, similar to a JPEG photo. The benefits of using final picture profiles are they're easy to use, there's no post-processing required, but you can still do basic edits and adjustments in post should you wish. And because of this, the process is normally a lot faster. The negative of using final picture profiles are you're limited by your choice in the camera, which in Sony cameras is five or six final profiles. Then we have our second category that I like to call developer picture profiles. This is flat or log profiles that require you to add color and other parameters in post-production to give the video its own characteristics. The simplest way of explaining this is the video file is only 50% done. Once it's in the camera, you have to do the other 50% on a laptop or PC. The benefits of using developer picture profiles are you got more room to adjust the colors, parameters, and add your own characteristics in post-production and they usually retain more detail and dynamic range. The negatives are because you're only 50% complete once you've recorded your video clip, the process is a lot slower, but it's worth mentioning that it could yield better results. So now you have a basic understanding of both categories, let's take a look at the first one, which is final picture profiles. So to start and give us a good reference point, we'll start with picture profiles set to off. This is straight out of the camera with no settings applied. Let's compare this with picture profile one. Now picture profile one has the gamma and color mode set to movie. And if you're thinking this looks identical to picture profile off, that is because they are in fact exactly the same. Picture profile one is identical to picture profile off. Let's now see how Picture Profile 1 compares to Picture Profile 2. Now Picture Profile 2 uses the gamma and color mode called Still. This is the standard setting for still images when not using any picture profile. What I find with this picture profile is it's really good in low light situations, especially nighttime film recordings. Noise levels are reduced and it gives a more consistent black level compared to any other picture profile. Let's have a look at Picture Profile 3. So this is Picture Profile 3. It uses the Gamma Curve ITU709, also known as Rec709. And to keep it as simple as possible, Rec709 is the industry standard. For example, if we have multiple cameras, different models, different brands, how can we set them up to record at exactly the same levels? And that's what Rec709 is. 
we would set all cameras to record at Rec 709. That way we know all our cameras are matched. And let's have a look at picture profile number four. And again, this records in Gamma Curve ITU 709. And the only difference between this picture profile and picture profile three is a color mode. On the previous one, the color mode was set to Pro, which is used in Sony broadcast cameras. And in this one, it's set to ITU 709 matrix, which is the industry standard for broadcast cameras. But I can't see any difference at all between picture profile three and number four. If you can, let me know in the comment section below. Let's have a look at picture profile number five. And this is picture profile number five, and the gamma curve is Cine 1. I particularly like this picture profile. It's very low contrast and very natural look. Almost gives off the Panasonic camera look, which I must say I'm a big fan of. And in this picture profile, you still get a little bit of wiggle room in your video editing to add saturation or contrast if you desire. Now picture profile number six, this has a gamma curve called Cine 2 which is very similar to our previous picture profile. Again, it's a very natural look and only very slight differences between picture profile number five. We still get that wiggle room in video editing to mess around with the highlights, shadows, color and contrast, which allows us to be a little bit flexible. Think of it as a safety net. Now we jump from picture profile number six all the way to picture profile number 11. And this is Sony's latest picture profile and it's called S Cinetone. And I must say, I am a massive fan of this picture profile. It's my favorite out of any of them. It seems to take all the best bits from picture profile one, picture profile three, and picture profile five, mix them together into this one superb picture profile. So that's a look at all our picture profiles that I refer to as final picture profiles. Now, before we go on to the developer picture profiles, I would just like to point out that every picture profile is fully customizable and you can alter every setting within inside the picture profile. So picture profile one could become picture profile two if you wish, or picture profile three could be a combination of picture profiles four and five. Or if say you like picture profile three, but you wish it had a little bit more saturation, well, that's no problem at all. You can adjust this in the menu. If you do decide to change any of the settings and you can't remember what it was originally, don't panic. At the bottom of the menu system in the picture profiles, there is a reset button. So let's take a look at our developer picture profiles. These are picture profiles seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now, if you own one of Sony's newer cameras, you'll find that your picture profiles 7, 8, 9 are missing from the list in picture profiles, whereas the older Sony cameras have them listed. Don't worry, I'll be showing you how to access these later in the video. Let's have a look at these picture profiles and see how they compare. And this is picture profile 7, which comes under S-Log2. Now, this is no longer available on Sony's newer cameras. But as you can see, this is a flat or log profile. And what that means in the real world is that our bright areas in the image are darkened and our dark areas in the image are lightened. This means that our video file retains a lot more detail in the highlights and in the shadows, which could be lost if we used the final picture profiles that I mentioned earlier. We would need to take this video file and load it into a video editor and color grade this footage to get it back to a level that we're happy with. If you've never heard of color grading, but you'd like to learn it, my advice would be to search in YouTube for beginner's guide to color grading. Now going back to S-Log2, this is the older log picture profile from Sony that they no longer use. Sony now uses S-Log3, which is picture profile eight. And here it is, picture profile eight, S-Log3. This is a favorite amongst Sony users as it usually retains the highest dynamic range out of any picture profile. Now, if you're a beginner to color grading, I recommend not using S-Log3 to begin with. I'm gonna show you an alternative in a moment. And unlike picture profile seven, S-Log2, this picture profile is a lot easier to expose correctly in camera for your scene. S-Log2 had a starting point for ISO of 500, which always used to be a pain in the backside, and I'm really glad that Sony have got rid of it. But let's take a look at picture profile nine, which is again, S-Log3. And if you think this looks very similar to picture profile eight, that is because it almost is just slightly with a different color mode. 
This uses color mode Escamart 3 and picture profile 8 uses Escamart 3 Cine. I find that this picture profile is slightly easier to color grade than picture profile 8. And this is the final picture profile, picture profile 10, which is HLG2. And this is a great picture profile for anybody that's starting to get into color grading and wants to learn how to color grade. It's very easy to expose for, yet still retains a high level of dynamic range and is a lot easier to work with than some of the other log profiles. I like to think of it as a half a log profile, where it's 50% completed already for you, you've just got to finalize it in your video editor. So that's a quick look at what I refer to as developer picture profiles. Now, if you own one of the newer Sony cameras, picture profile 7, 8 and 9 might be missing from your menu system. So let me show you how you turn these on. Press the menu button on the back of the camera, head down to the light grey category, main menu 2, move across to the right and then look for log shooting. And you're going to change this from off to on. Once you've done that, you get a couple of options on your color mode. Select whichever one you like, and then the camera's ready to go. Now you might have noticed you only get S-Log3 in here, and a couple of color modes. You will notice also that when you've turned this log shooting mode on, that all other picture profiles are disabled. Which might not be ideal, so I'm going to show you a different way where you get all the options open to you, and all the different settings. First go back to your log shooting menu, and make sure this is switched off so that you open up all your picture profiles. Head on back to your picture profile menu and select one that you rarely use. In this case, I'm gonna select picture profile six for no other reason than it's the one highlighted. Press right on your control dial, go to gamma first, and here you can see all the options available to you. Some of which we've not even touched upon in this video. And now because you have a good basic understanding of the picture profile modes, select the one that you want to use, head on down to color mode afterwards, and then select your choice of color mode. Come back out of this menu and then that picture profile is now saved to your settings. So there you have it, a look at the picture profiles built into the Sony cameras. Now the best way of finding out about these picture profiles and which ones you like is literally going out and playing with the camera, changing between each picture profile and deciding on one you like. Remember also that if you do change any of the picture profile settings, you can always quickly and easily reset them. Now with picture profiles, there's no such thing as a wrong picture profile, so don't let anybody tell you there is. It all comes down to personal preference. And if you're looking to start color grading your footage, make sure you check out HLG2, it's a lot more forgiving. Well, that's going to bring this video to an end. If you've got anything at all from it, please give it a big thumbs up. If you want to see further videos from myself, hit that subscribe button. But for now, that's it. We'll catch up in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.